you know, majority over the NDC. Yeah. Aren't you scared that one of you, particularly those who may have been offended by Professor Michael Quay, would vote for Alban Bagbin and flip it in the NDC's favor? No, I mean, in elections, anything is possible. There are also those who may have been offended by Mr. Alban Bagbin, who may decide to flip from their side and join us um, so that we get more than the 138 uh, that uh, I think everybody expects us to pick. Of course, let's admit it is a very close um, parliament and therefore a very close election. If my memory serves me right, uh, Peter Alajiti, when he was nominated by the then minority, actually got two votes yeah. from um, the majority side. So um, you are very right in saying that nobody goes or should go into this with comfort and joy that it's a done deal. But I do not think that our leadership is also approaching it with that view that this is a done deal. The necessary exercises that need to go on in terms of whipping our votes and ensuring that uh, we have all our members here and getting the numbers uh, are uh, being, being undertaken. And talking about whipping your votes, uh, is there an indication that members would have to show how they are voting? I don't have that kind of uh, indication. This, if I'm correct, is a secret ballot. I've seen the electoral commissioner's boots um, already available in the speaker's lobby. Um, well, the electoral commission is, has been... Uh, I've seen the electoral commissioner's booths, okay. the booths for the election in the speaker's oh. lobby, uh, as we were uh, caucusing before we came in. So it is my expectation that they'll bring those booths in for a secret ballot. Uh, we are hopeful that it will give us an opportunity to possibly even get more than the 138 that uh, people are expecting you us to are hoping um, that an NDC MP will vote for you. Well, if, you look, at, you. if you look at Mr. Bagman and his history in the NDC, uh, you know, especially his history when it comes to the Mahama side of the NDC and the kind of things that he has said and done in times past to uh, 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 cause angst within their camp. When we speak to them, there are a lot of them who are, you know, like, uh, the time comes, so into they come some. So we are also hopeful. Oh, they tell you they're going to be voting against Well, them. they haven't exactly said that, but we have a conversation among ourselves. So we are also hoping that we can pull some of those, especially those from the Mahama flock who are in angst about what Mr. Bagbin said and has been saying about Mr. Mahama over the years, that we can get them onto our side um, and give us more than the 138 that we are looking for. Now, Mr. Ponkrumah, tonight we saw what happened. The biggest surprise I can go, go into tonight was a decision of the uh, High Court in, in Cape Coast um, when, it, when it has to do with the Asin North. Now, the, your, your NDC colleagues tell us he is going to be participating fully. I think in, we've in cited him in the chamber. Yes, yeah. but they say he's there. Yeah. What's, what's, what's your reaction to that? You see, I think that we should do some public education. First of all, tonight, Parliament is just one polling station. I've heard people talk about you know, who is sitting on the majority side, who is sitting on it. It all doesn't matter. Parliament is only a polling station tonight for the purposes of electing a speaker who will then proceed to swear in members of parliament. And then if the appetite is there to elect the deputy speakers tonight, we may choose to do so as well. Uh, therefore, tonight, in our estimation, who sits on the left, who sits on the right is inconsequential. Mm -hmm. That's why we have elected that we will not uh, uh, grant the grace of this drama that our friends from the other side are hoping they can engineer by coming in early, sitting on the right, then hoping that we'll come in and try and remove them or something. That's what they are hoping to engineer. We're not going to grant them that. Because tonight, if you read the rules, the business is simple. The clerk of parliament after midnight will announce that these are MP select. The eighth parliament is about to comment. We don't have a speaker. May I receive nominations, when those nominations are made available, we will then go into a vote. Now that vote, like every other vote at every other polling station, you don't show up and say, I want to vote. You've covered elections. If you showed up at any polling station and said, I want to vote because my father says I should come and vote, you'll be thrown out. Mm. Because the security at the polling station, the electoral officials at the polling station. What is going to happen is that they are going to call the role of MPs elect, as has been provided by the electoral commission. Mm. And if indeed the clerk has been served by the ruling of the court, then it means that parliament is injuncted from calling a particular name from a particular constituency. Is that person going to say at that point that he has elected that he's coming by force for a ballot paper to go and vote and put it in the box? Tell me, you are a journalist. Mm -hmm. You cover elections at polling stations. So it's that drama that our colleagues on the other side are looking for. But there are rules that apply, and you will notice when the time comes that they will call. They will call Francia Yebi, Koju, Opon Kruma. They can't call anybody else. And assuming somebody's been injuncted or I've been injuncted and the clerk has been served, the clerk will be stopped from calling me to come and receive a ballot paper. Because just like any polling station where your name is not on the uh, uh, voter roll, 
So I don't think there should be too much worry. We on our side are quite clear. The most important thing is to ensure that the minimum one through eight votes um, that we require, we get it um, to get our uh, uh, proposed speaker in the box and we should be fine. Okay. Um, Elting uh, just been managed to speak to Asirun Ketia because I know the party is involved in the decisions and I know your party as well uh, in everything. Uh, we're going to be getting Asirun Ketia's interview uh, to you shortly. Elting will stand by with that. But isn't that the thing about the whip and the party? The pa your party is whipping you with your whip, obviously. And the question about what's going to happen. The NDC side is, is firm on what is going to happen tonight. In terms, in terms of, of what? their posture. You've talked about the drama. They, they are insisting that the man will vote and not, first of all, the service. Do you know if it has to be confirmed that they... I don't have uh, clarity on that one. I've heard in the grapevine that um, the clerk has been served. I can't confirm that. You may want to have your people check. Mm. But listen, assuming, assuming the clerk has not even been served, we have a minimum 138 votes that we are hoping to have in the bag, which still gives us uh, a majority in electing our speaker. Mm. If the clerk has been served, then it means that he will be stopped from uh, mm. participating in that mm. um, uh, process. So um, I think we should let the rules play out. It's not really a big deal. Quick confirmations. Who is your nominee for first deputy speaker? Um, we are pretty clear in our mind that uh, Joseph Oseusu um, will be um, our nominee for first deputy speaker, assuming we opt to go for that election. Mm. Um, uh, tomorrow morning um, mm. as well. And, and the, the second deputy? Well, again, there's a lot of conversation in the caucus. There are those who are of the view that um, we should be magnanimous and despite what our colleagues are doing to try and mar the whole location, let the conventions of parliament prevail, in which case they have indicated to us that they will want the Honorable Dominic Aine uh, to be elected as second deputy speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those on our side who say, grant them that, let's continue to be gracious. There are those who say that if they go ahead to mar the processes, then a nomination should be brought for our good friend, the Honorable Isiama from Formina, mm -hmm. uh, to take that up. But I'm sure by the time we get there, um, we'll be quite clear uh, on how things would have panned out overnight. Now, I'm interested in when they indicated to you that uh, Dominic Ayine is the one they want to present as um, second deputy speaker. When did they tell you this? This has been in the halls of parliament for the last about three, four days. It was actually, uh, may I say, a back and forth between Mahama Yariga and Dominic Ayine, and they've been talking to us. Mm. I mean, mm. let's be honest, they've been talking and to even us. Even after they decided to bring urban bagging, they've still been talking yes, to you about Yes, they've still been it. talking to us. And there are those on their side who are, you know, making the point that this is a novel parliament. It's 137, 137. Therefore, no matter what happens, you know, we should still be magnanimous. And there are those on our side who have the view that that is the way to go. There What's are those who are more mm. hard-lined mm. uh, at it. But in the end, leadership will give guidance and then we'll follow. Mm. So what's your view on that? Leadership will give guidance and we'll follow. <laughs> but you think you should be magnanimous to let them have it? Leadership will give guidance and we'll follow. We, we've heard that those who say, well, let's, if they insist, then let's punish them by taking all four. Three, except that the constitution then makes it impossible for that to happen because the two must be from parties other than yours. And that is why some have suggested that in that case, then you nominate the Formula MP. The Formula MP. Yes, that yes. is if he's interested. Yes. If I mean, you have a written consent from he's him. He's not going to be the most important man in Ghana right now. He can get anything <laughs> he wants. He just has to ask. Yeah. If I were him, I would, yeah. I would, I, I, well, I would probably ask for something yeah. bigger. Yeah. Anyway. Kujo, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you, and um, uh, so congratulations to the entire country. I think if you look at the feed coming in from the Chamber of mm -hmm. Parliament, what some expected would have been that by now there's chaos, people trying to move our friends from the other side. But if you go to the Bible, the woman who is the actual mother of the baby is the one who said, don't cut up the baby. If she wants to fight over the baby, we can do this in a magnanimous manner so that we save the beauty of the occasion. And that is the approach that um, the majority side has taken in this matter. After all, tonight is just a polling station in Parliament. Mm. We are here. In fact, we can choose not to sit in the chamber. We can choose to sit in the gallery. Mm. Because what will happen is that they will call the names one by one to come. If voting starts now and I'm not in the chamber, my name will be called and I'll go in and go and cast my ballot and I can come and sit back here. Mm. So we're not going to mar the beauty of the occasion by following this drama that our colleagues on the other side yeah. are hoping to bring up. We are clear in our minds that it's a solemn occasion and we should let the Ghanaian democracy uh, benefit from it. You've seen the, 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 the kind of awkward pictures coming from, from the U.S. The US. Yeah. 
Is that what we want here in Ghana? No, we don't want that here in Ghana. So we're going to have a very dignified ceremony in the wee hours of the morning and tomorrow as well uh, in the makeshift chamber when we uh, go for the inauguration of uh, President Akufuado and Vice President uh, Baumia. And then we'll move it L from Let there. me ask you this. This is I'm curious. I saw you emerge from a bus. Yes. Were you camped? Um, come to no. Come to no. We've been having a series of caucus meetings, mm -hmm. and because there are uh, different views, some are new members, etc. You can't do all of it here. So we've been at um, a hotel where we've gone through, you know, the various. Uh, things that we want to do, we don't want to do. There are those who have different views on how we should go about this, and you need to explain to them that these are the rules. We don't need to be radical about this. This is how we can achieve this in the end. Uh, if that is what people want to call camping, well, I won't begrudge them that. But you notice that I think both sides, we've been um, at various caucusing points, and then we've come here in buses, and we'll be doing same I, I guess tomorrow as well. When you first came in four years ago, did you come with a group, everybody? Um, no, we didn't. Yeah, we but didn't. So I guess that's, that's my curiosity. Yeah. Was there something special about this year that somebody said, I think this year, let's one get of everybody the, to come together? I think this year one of the biggest things has been the security risk. Okay. Um, we have been warned to be very careful because there are suspicions that people could be prevented from coming in here so that you don't have the 138 to get the numbers that you are looking for, or people could even be harmed. Um, as part of this uh, uh, exercise, and it's important not to take anything uh, for granted. So we've spent about two days or so going through a number of things, particularly to get the new members aligned. Uh, I think that's what our colleagues on the other side, and I think now you're having drama unfold in the yeah. uh, uh, chamber. Um, so very unfortunate. So somebody, it looks like somebody had attempted to drag somebody from their seat. Yeah. And as you see this unfold, yeah. that's what it looks like. I see um, Yilitre there, and I see a lot of the leaders also there. And this obviously is a drama that Kojo said uh, we don't want to see, but it's playing out now. Uh, I see a lot of the, your colleague female MPs who are yelling and there's ex heated exchange of words um, on the floor right now. And it appears this has to do with the seating arrangement because somebody had taken a seat. And, and I, I see people almost gesticulating yeah. aggressively about, about this. I see um, John Jinapo, who was with us a short while ago, who was clear that he was going to lay down his life almost to ensure that... We are know, clear in our minds that this is what the NDC wants. This is what our friends from the NDC want. And that is why our leadership has been quite clear to our members that don't grant them this wish that they want. This is what they want, to mar the occasion get it nasty with MP select arguing on the floor, throwing things up and down. That's not what you want. Yeah. And tonight, the rules are quite clear. Tonight, Parliament is only a polling station to elect the Speaker and to swear in MPs elect. Yeah, you I mean, can sit in the gallery and be called. Um, Parliament, that I've known it, and Kojo, we did this job together for yes, a long yes, time. Yes. You, you rarely see a Ghanaian parliament do this. Yes. Rarely, very yes. rarely. And this is what our colleagues in the NDC want to engineer. And that is why our leadership has been making the point that don't bite that beat. But to be fair, though, we don't know who is the instigator here, to be fair. It's just, we are just watching that. Oh, but I think... We're just watching the pictures. I think if you follow the conversation, even what we had earlier, everybody expected that our side will be on the right-hand side of the speaker's chair. Our colleagues have gone to sit there, baiting that somebody will come and try and take a seat, etc. Leadership has explained to us that be on the left side, let's go through the process, let's elect the speaker, let the speaker make the consequential rulings, mm. and that can be followed. Yeah. And that's my understanding of what we are seeking to do. I don't know what exactly has happened well, in the last exactly, two, three yes, minutes. That, that is, because but everybody was seated quite yes, calmly. This is, what, this is what we understand our colleagues want to engineer, and uh, I don't think we have to grant them that. Yeah, I mean, so now I, see, I see here uh, candidate Japon, uh, who is, well, the gentle tap on the head of his other colleague on the other side. Um, that is, um, well, now there's a nice exchange of Kennedy Japon trying to calm down John Jinapo. In fact, I see another MP trying to move him away. Um, and it appears he's a center of this. Okay, now they are these your colleagues? No, this is the NDC. This members. is the NDC side. NDC side who now are now up feet. on their feet, yes. uh, clapping I think about and singing and clapping, singing and clapping, and, and you know. Um, but but my, my, the thing though, because you don't have a speaker, yes, you're going to have the clerk presiding. Yes, the clerk has not even come. It's not even midnight. Yeah, I technically mean, we are still on the clock of the seventh parliament. Seventh parliament. 
and, and, and yet, we have the new MPs who are yet to be sworn in in the yeah, House yeah. Who, when this is playing out. And there's nobody to restore order like Lesi Pika won. The Marshal, at this stage, is the one whose task it is to ensure that there's order in the chamber. Okay. Um, while we wait for the clerk to assume uh, his position and then announce to the House the proceedings that are supposed to come on. Mm -hmm. We were briefed by leadership. As I mentioned earlier, that leadership will give direction and the will flow. We were briefed by leadership to move, because when we came in, we were all on the sidelines. We were briefed to move in and take our seats on the other side and just be calm, allow the clerk to come in, call for the election, let the election be over. And then, um, depending on how that election uh, uh, terminates, then the consequential orders will follow. The speaker will then swear in the MPs elect. Mm. Um, and then after that, assuming there's the appetite to elect deputy speakers, mm. we may go ahead and do it. If there's no such ap appetite, there could be an adjournment. Mm. And then we go for the president swearing in tomorrow morning. Mm. I do not know exactly what has transpired in the last two, three minutes to mm. uh, now get things to degenerate. Mr. Kuma, thank you very much. I um, allow you to see if you can go and be the peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's leadership. They will call yes. the shots. The leadership but will call I'm the I'm grateful shorts. that you join us. Thank you very much. And wish you all the best. Happy Constitution Day to you. Sure, guys. absolutely. Uh, I want to let's 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 listen to the sounds a bit of what is happening on the floor. So we're so watching this unfold in Parliament right now, this uh, chaos over the seating arrangement. If you're just joining us and may not be watching, just get onto myjoyonline.com and, and watch uh, this unfold there. What we are watching right now, if you're listening to us on Joy 99.7 FM, is, is, is the two sides haggling over the seat. There uh, appears to be some commotion over, over the seating arrangement, um, which has caused this uh, uh, commotion. There are several members of parliament trying to calm tensions. A lot of them are standing, and, and there's been a heated exchange uh, over this uh, for some time. You, you're not surprised that this is playing out? Well, um, I am not surprised, uh, uh, because if I look at the fact that um, the NDC comes in and sits at where the majority sits. But what is surprising to me is when the NPP says, we expected this, and so we wouldn't mind them. And you ask yourself the question, why would this happen? We do not know who started it, but you would expect that if the party leadership is speaking to its members, it would whip them in line and say, let us not do anything to mar the swearing-in ceremony of the president. Because once this happens, we would talk about it, it takes the news tomorrow. Mm. And so 
for me, what is surprising is that even if, and, I, and I'm saying even if, I don't know who started it. We're here. We'll get I mean, further reports to, to know mm -hmm. who started it. Mm -hmm. But whoever might have started it, should the MPP should not have reacted this way based on what their leadership has been telling us, yeah. if that is actually what they agreed on. And if they've gone contrary to what leadership has talked about, and the voting booth is going to be there for members to vote secretly, <coughs> Could it be the case then that people would also go against what leadership has been trying to do? See, all see, this see what is unfolding now. Uh, this is uh, ABF Husseini now in a very heated, almost uh, pushing. Uh, this is Brian Champo. This is Brian Champo. This uh, standoff. It was between ABF Fuseni and Brian Champo. And, and I can also see Obiamu. I think that's Obiamu trying to be yeah. a peacemaker. Yes. To settle this, um, this particular matter, it's almost getting to being pushed. People being pushed around. Uh, I see um, ABF Hussaini being walked away now uh, from a possible confrontation that could degenerate even further on this. Now, as all this unfolds, I haven't seen the leadership. I haven't seen Chairman Sabunsu because this is still the seventh partner. Yes, I mean, technically it is. But, uh, but you know, I, I, I also do think maybe I haven't okay. seen, I uh, said Chairman Sabozo, I haven't seen Harun Adrisu. Maybe, maybe they're uh, trying to reach some consensus by now. I do not know. Possible. But you would expect them to be there. But even if they're there and if other members can prove or can show that they'll be able to solve it. You saw Kennedy at Japan trying to talk. I mean, he was talking to one of the enemies. John Jinapo. You know, John Jinapo. He, okay. he talks to him and he taps him a little bit and tells him relax and all of that. So um, if there are peacemakers within... Uh, you know, today's polling station of parliament. I, okay. I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, the leadership could... I, I want us to hear John Shasir and Kitsia. The thing people need to understand tonight is that the party leadership are in the House. Yeah. And right now is, we can now, uh, Elting is, is, is with John Shasir and Kitsia, the General Secretary of the NDC. Elting is, is, is with John Shasir and Kitsia. Maybe shortly, uh, Elton is going to be, uh, we're going to be hearing from Johnson Student Kitia. And they're, they're here for a reason. The party has an interest in what is happening. And the party position really is what the members of parliament must be uh, uh, enforcing on the floor. And so we are going to be, um, we, we, Elton is going to be interacting with Johnson Student Kitia and John Buru both. Now, 2005, mm -hmm. and you expect Arban Babin to go through and be elected as a speaker for the eighth parliament? Sure, because we cannot have people carrying a speaker inside his car and outside his car anytime he's moving. We need a speaker who is active, who can, who can do the job. Mm. Unfortunately, <laughs> the numbers may look a bit tricky in terms of getting your way through. 137, 137, have one person in the middle. Mm -hmm. You still have the confidence that it will swing in your favor. I'm happy that you are talking about one person in the middle. So that one person can vote other way. And the others, in fact, the 137, 137, those who want to vote uh, to take decisions that will serve the national interest will certainly not be voting along party lines. They will vote to choose somebody who can be the speaker. Because we cannot be carrying a speaker or speaker cannot be moving with an ambulance. So we will, we will certainly uh, select Alban Bagwin. And clearly Alban Bagwin has the pedigree. I mean, he's, he's going to be a speaker who actually has uh, learned how to become a speaker, he's been a member of parliament, the longest serving member of parliament in the country as we speak. Mm. And so I believe that members will look at the choice of a person who will serve uh, the nation better. It is not going to be on a sentimental, uh, partisan basis where they will take a decision which will lead Ghana into, uh, you know, Practically hiring people to be carrying a speaker inside his car and outside his car. But, but, uh, General, just one quick one. I know that you, 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 you've been in this house for long, yes. but we have, there's also an inauguration of a president elect. Yes. Well, the NDC we, are not here for the, we are not here for the inauguration tomorrow if there is an inauguration. Sorry.
present uh, with uh, Elting uh, Broby, uh, and we already okay, we can we will also be watching shortly uh, an interview that Elting did. Uh, Elting is live with the with the N, N, MPP's general secretary as well, who is also here. The entire party machinery is here in force for for a, a particular reason, which is that you have to whip your members in line uh, to, to, in essence, carry out the instructions of the, of the party. And they've met several times to agree on this. Could you talk about the caucus meetings? Now, we are counting down now to midnight. We are some 25 minutes to midnight when the real action will begin. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Now, it's a reason why Jim Jassin and KTI and, uh, um, and John Bodu are in the house. It, it, and we expect that they will be in the chamber, um, um, possibly at the gallery, but they want to ensure that nothing goes to awry other than what they plan. Exactly, and it is the reason why I am surprised it's going to be by secret balloting. I am sure finally, uh, before the voting is done, members would have to indicate how they voted. I mean, I was talking about the 2005 example where you saw then, uh, you know, m Majority Leader Felix Oswich upon standing by, uh, you know, the whips were also standing around making sure you had Osei Chime and Sabun, so at the time as the, uh, you know, Majority Chief Whip, making sure that uh, the uh, majority members at the time in casting their vote would, were doing so just how they wanted them to do it. And so I'd be surprised if that doesn't happen. Um, I, I also am aware that, for instance, if you look at um, the times that uh, Dan Butcher was general secretary, and he's on record to have actually said, he said this on radio one time, that look, while he was general secretary, any member of parliament who went contrary to party decisions and voted against the party decision, he would make sure that your next prime meeting becomes very difficult for you. And that is the reason why they are here. The general secretaries are the administrative heads of the political parties. They want to ensure that the right things are done. And they want to ensure that if for nothing at all, those who have pledged to a loyalty to the cause of the party would vote for the party, while they try also to flip uh, some members from the other side. The NDC is indicated they are in, I mean, uh, they're in talks we with... Can go um, to, uh, Sorry, I'll come to you. Yeah. Let's, let's go to John Budu now, who is the General Secretary of the MPP. For the good job they've done and also welcoming the new parliament uh, 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 early, early this morning. Do you have the full complement of your members to take part in this very crucial meeting? Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them will be in. And the instruction is that you go according to what the party has put before parliament? Obviously, uh, we have... Uh, propose our leadership, mm. majority leadership, uh, Honorable Chairman Sabun, so is continuing as the majority leader. Uh, Honorable Alfinio Markin is the deputy majority leader. Anodon Pre is the chief whip, uh, the first deputy chief whip is Honorable Lydia Sarah Malassan, and the second deputy chief whip is uh, Honorable Habib uh, uh, Idrisu, the member of parliament for Tolon, that, that, that is settled by the National Council of our party. Uh, for the speakership, we are proposing and have asked that uh, Honorable Right, Honorable Aaron Michael Okwe should be the one that our members should vote for. And this was overwhelmingly accepted by the entire membership of the party, the National Council, and the 137 plus the independent candidate uh, adding up to 138, that they will vote for him as the Speaker of Parliament, for the eighth, eighth Parliament, yeah. Let, let, let me pick your brains on this. Is, is there an indication whom the party has settled on, for example, the role of First Deputy Speaker of Parliament? Yes, we've also proposed uh, Honorable Ose Usu. Uh, popularly called Joe Weiss. The so, yeah, the current first deputy to, to continue mm -hmm. as well. So immediately after uh, we get the speaker, we are proposing uh, Honorable Joe Weiss mm -hmm. to be the first deputy speaker as well. In 2005, when the NDC went in for Peter Lajete, the MPP then decided to punish them by nominating somebody for the role of second deputy speaker. If the same thing play out 
are in the chamber today, will the party go to a similar fashion? Uh, I think that it will be wise up this, this, this time around. Uh, I don't think that there's a need for any mischief to be played, just as they tried doing in 2005. And we expect that the Ghanaian people have decided, they have decided clearly that they want Anadu Danko Akufuado to continue to run this country for the next four years. They've also said that they don't want an overwhelming majority in parliament. They want a parliament that will see consensus and cooperation. And I believe that they will fall in line if they refuse to do so, the worst will happen just as it happened in 2005. And the only option for you will be the former MP. Is okay. that what the party is working with? There's no option apart from that. It's not just about the party, but there's no option apart from uh, if they decide not to cooperate and collaborate with us, then the only option will be that uh, the, the independent candidate becomes uh, the second deputy speaker. But I hope they won't go to that line. They won't traverse the, the path they did in 2005. I hope they won't. All right. uh, General, let, let me ask this question. I've been speaking to some members of the NDC, and they've made it clear that they don't recognize the declaration of President Okufuado as the president-elect as done by the Electoral Commission. And for that reason, they will not be part of the inauguration, which will I, come up pretty soon. Would that I, take anything away from what will happen? I don't think happen? that it lies in their mouth to determine who is the president of their country. It is the registered eligible voters of our country that decide who becomes the president for the next four years. And they've done that very clear. It is clear over 500. Even Atamos was recognized as president of this country. We've just, just three times voting, just a, major, a, a, a margin of just about 40,000. Even he was, was regarded as, as president. Even John Mama in 2012, with all the controversies that surrounded the elections, the difference between him and 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 Nanado Danko Akufuado then was just under two hundred thousand. So if you have somebody who the Ghanaian people overwhelming uh, Ghanaians have decided five hundred thousand plus, it doesn't lie in the mouth of the NDC to determine who becomes the president. It is the people of this country who determines, and they determine it, and they've said it loud and clear. General, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the chamber very soon. General Secretary of the MPP, John Boedu, speaking to us. Let me bring in the Member of Parliament, the Member of Parliament in Ledford, Kankwe Central, Patrick Yabuama, uh, who uh, is also a Deputy Minister for uh, Sanitation. Uh, officially, you are still a Deputy Minister until maybe after the midnight of today. But uh, your expectations... unfolded in the last uh, few minutes as we count down we are some 19 minutes to midnight when the real deal is and will unfold i'm looking forward to it but elting has been digging into what happened on the floor a short while ago when there was chaos as you see on the screens right now there it's calm but a short while ago, there was, there was a, a chaos where people were gesticulating, pushing each other on the floor. Elting, do, do we know what indeed happened? I know you are positioned at a place where you could tell us um, with some certainty what happened. What more are we learning about what causes commotion? What happened was that when Minister for Communications, Esla Ousu Egufo, came in, she decided that she would go and sit at where she sat before parliament was adjourned. That was around 4 p.m. today. And then, so she went straight to the right side of the speaker where uh, she sat before uh, the house was adjourned. Now, remember that the right side of the speaker has already been taken over by the NDC group uh, going into the eighth parliament. So when Esla Ousu came in and went to that side, uh, she took her seat. But then some NDC members wanted her out of that particular area because according to them, 
uh, they are taking over that place. And so she should move to the left side of the speaker. And this brought about some confusion because the, uh, let me say that the women caucus on the MPP side decided to go to her aid. And that brought about uh, the confusion and the singing and all that. As I speak to you right now, Esla Owusu is still on the right side of the speaker where we have uh, an NDC dominated MPs in the Chamber of Parliament. And she insists she will not move because according to her, until the seventh parliament is dissolved and then the presiding officer, in this case, the clerk of parliament comes in and then there's order in the house and then the seating arrangement is realigned. She will continue to occupy her seats that she sat on before the adjournment of the house and she will do so until there's clarity as to where the MPP or the NDC will sit in the eighth parliament. So as I speak to you right now, Esla Ousu is still on the right side of the, the, the speaker's chair, dominated by NDC MPs going into the eighth parliament. And uh, so the confusion you saw on TV, uh, this is what brought about it, Evans. The NDC MPs, the newly elected MPs, they walked into the chamber very the early. NDC this was around MPs, nine the newly PM. elected MPs, they walked, the NPP MPs walked in. And when they walked in, they went straight to take the seats of the NMPP. Because remember that this is still the seventh parliament. Now, LT, that is what has happened and has caused a commotion. Now, you are very close to the action, of obviously. Now, Esla makes a point, and Elting has long years of uh, reporting in Parliament. Esla makes a point that we are still within the seventh Parliament, the seventh Parliament, which hasn't expired, Elting. And so what, in, what Esla's point is, according to the Constitution, she still must sit in the majority side of the House, correct? That's what she's saying. So we reach midnight. She wants to consider herself still in the seventh parliament. It will be only after the formal dissolution of parliament that will be at midnight that she can say that she's moving into the eighth parliament a minute after midnight. And even that will be when the presiding officer, in this case, the clerk of parliament, will come in and then uh, take members through the, uh, the process for the election of the speaker, and then there will be a formal swearing in. Now, a while ago, the chief justice also walked in. I don't know the role that he'll play in this whole enterprise. But according to Esla also, before Parliament adjourned uh, around 5 p.m. today, she moved from her seat on the right side of the speaker. So when she came in uh, this evening, she just went to that place. And for the NDC people who've dominated a particular area, they told her to move to the left side because that's where uh, her people are. But she insisted on maintaining her seat and she got support from the women on the MPP side. So that brought about some melee, but uh, the, the matter has been resolved. But on record, I can tell you for a fact that Esla also is not moving. She's not going anywhere. For her, she will continue to remain uh, 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 in her seat. As far as the constitution provision is concerned, she is still in the seventh parliament. She will only do so if there is clarity provided by the speaker in the eighth parliament as to where uh, each side will sit. Once that is done, Nothing will move her out of that seat, which is in the side of the NDC for now. Nothing will move her out and of that Elsing seat. And will stay with us which as we analyze this. In the but side uh, of the NDC for it is, now. It's absolutely Nothing critical. Nothing will move her and out and of that seat. will stay with us as we analyze this. She says the life of this parliament will only expire in under 15 minutes, which means, from Ursula's point of view, that. He, she's still in the mind. She's still in the in the in in the majority, and 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 where she's currently sitting is where she should sit. But we know that's not the case because the NDC guys have taken that particular place in anticipation of what is going to happen in the next few minutes when it strikes midnight. Well, Evans, um, you know there are always dissenters in every institution, mm. and so even though the NPP leadership had told all of us, uh, you, you you heard from them here telling us that 
Well, they expected this to happen. They had picked intelligence. The NDC was going to do this to mar the beauty of the occasion. They were not going to mind them. Mm. And so they were, okay, they're going to sit at the left. We saw Dan Botry coming in and urging, uh, you know, the NPP members to not bother, sit down on the left side of the speaker. Mm. But you ask yourself the simple question. Now, if the leadership had spoken to all members, why would Ursula want to do that? You're saying you would wait for the speaker to give clarity even mm -hmm. after midnight. The question is, your caucus is now sitting on the left side of the speaker. What prevents you from sitting on that left side? I mean, Evans, let me be very blunt here. If you ask me, I think that was unnecessary. Mm. It was unnecessary. Anything could have happened. And so far, until that time, everything was, was going very smoothly. We didn't and want so to take away. So that's saying your shot there. Yes. That's it's saying your shot there. And she's sitting beside uh, Collins Dowder. This is Collins Dowder. Yes. That's she's sitting beside Collins Dowder. Exactly. And, so the, for the first time, she finds herself in the midst of NDC MPs. Yes. But you know, you can also understand, you, you can also understand certain people. There are uh, some people who also like the, do I call it showmanship? Showmanship. They want to also prove that, I mean, I'm tough. I'm not going to allow them to bully us. And Esla has been that person who's forcefully uh, you know, carried out uh, all her actions. And so you don't, you know, you, uh, you shouldn't be surprised when you see Eslo Usuekufu doing this. But if you ask me, I tell you to be in, in, in all sincerity, this is unnecessary. We don't want to take uh, the bad shine away from the U.S., okay? Mm. Uh, let's continue with the swearing in. We'll go through the voting. Everything will go on nicely. And if Alban Bagbin becomes Speaker of Parliament, so be it. If Michael Quay becomes Speaker of Parliament, so be it. But yeah. this is, I mean, this was unnecessary. I mean, Elton, so with us. Elton, let me bring you back in. You mentioned earlier that you've seen the, um, the Chief Justice uh, in the House. Now, they, w in the next um, 10 minutes or so, when it's midnight, a few things will happen. One of the things that will happen will require the Chief Justice presence. The Chief Justice, according to the Constitution, will have to swear in the Speaker once elected. It is a Speaker who will then swear in the um, members of Parliament. Yes, Elton, that is, that is why the, the Chief Justice is there. But you've been in the House for so long. You've witnessed what is about to happen in 10 minutes for so long. Walk us through. Let's have a conversation about what, what we expect to happen in 10 minutes. Now, two names are on the ballot, or we expect to be on the ballot. Professor Michael Quay and Alban Babi. Have you seen um, Professor Michael Quay or Alban Babi in the chamber the ballot. yet? Or any, anywhere around where you are? And Alban Babi. Have you seen um, Professor ballot. Michael Quay or Alban Babi in the chamber? Separate rooms are waiting for my nominations that will be put forward by members from both sides. Now, in the next few minutes to come, what we are positioned is where the clerk of parliament together with uh, members of the table office will, will use to enter the main chamber of parliament. And then they'll be followed by the chief justice. Now, when the clerk of parliament sits and then begin the process of presiding over the house, uh, he's going to invite nominations from both sides, if there are any, for the position of the speaker of parliament. Now, as you may be aware, we already know that the MPP, they've nominated Professor Mike Aaron Okwe as the speaker for the eighth parliament. We also have a counter nomination from the NDC in the person of Alban Sumana Baben, the, mem the former member of parliament for Nandoli Kalio. So the clerk of parliament will preside, he will invite nominations, and then this nomination will be subjected to approval of the House. Now, because we know that there are two people who are competing for the same slot, it is going to go into a voting process. Now, there are three stages uh, in terms of taking decision on the floor of parliament regarding to voting. There is the yes and no vote, otherwise known as the, the, the voice vote. And then if uh, the voice vote is not accepted, we'll move to the second stage, which is the head count, where members of parliament in favor of the motion will stand and to be counted and then, uh, and then we'll move to another one. If that is also not successful, then we'll move to the test, which is the secret ballot, where the clerk at table will call members according to how they are arranged alphabetically, and then we will be given the nomination form, which will have the names of the two nominees, uh, Professor Michael Quay and then uh, uh, Arban Babem, and then you vote, you go and drop it in a ballot box that will be provided by the clerk at table. And then when it is done, it will be open, it will be counted, we will have representatives from both sides supervise the counting process, and after which the clerk of parliament will announce the eventual winner. When that is done, the speaker, if we have a winner at the end of the day, the speaker will be ushered uh, into the chamber. That is where the chief justice will swear the person in, 
and he will in turn swear in members of parliament elect. So this is how the process is going to be. It's supposed to be a very simple one. However, it is likely to get into a lot of uh, confusion and, and uh, counter, uh, you know, uh, comments here and there because of the issues at stake. Because we have both parties, they have vested interest in who becomes the speaker of this uh, August House, and that is what we are all in for. Otherwise, if you want to go by the standard orders of Parliament, it is supposed to be a very smooth exercise, devoid of rancor and all the confusion that everybody wants to avoid. But that's exactly how things are going to play out in the Chamber of Parliament today, Evans. to happen uh, shortly with, with the two nominations uh, in, in, in the House. And Elton will stay with us. Elton will join us again shortly uh, as, we, as we get into the uh, specifics of, of what is about to unfold. Um, we are counting down now, um, Winston. We are, what, seven, six minutes to midnight. When the, when the clock strikes midnight, as Elton has just explained, a lot will begin to unfold. All that will begin to unfold. The drama will begin to unfold. The key out unknown still is what happens with the Asin North MP. Could you confirm to us, mm. a short while ago, could you open confirmation, Minister, that he, sp he spotted him in the house? Yeah. Now, one of the biggest questions that had emerged just around 6 p.m. when I was doing Newsnight was the court instructed that the ruling be served on the clerk. And because he cannot hold himself out as a speaker. The, que the question, and, and Joseph Gakpo, our parliamentary correspondent, had gone to the class office to check if indeed he had received it. And this must have been around 5.30. At that time, he says there was no confirmation that the clerk had received the, the ruling, the notification of this has happened. Now, between that time and now, there's a lot of time has passed, almost four hours, right? Yeah. Um, and so we, we would expect to hear when the clerk takes the seat, because the clerk will supervise the process of the issue, he will chair. Mm -hmm. He will have to announce if indeed he has been served. And if he has been served, and Kojo has said, and that's a procedure, when they are calling the names of the MPs elect to come forward and vote, if he's been served, he cannot call the name of the MP who has been who has been asked by the court not to participate. That is going to be one of the most fascinating points of what is about to happen in five minutes onwards. Exactly. And one of the things you'd expect also, if the clerk has been served, he may uh, then go ahead and say, this is the ruling of the Cape Coast High Court and thus this member of parliament, the member of parliament elect for Asenov, cannot be sworn in, mm. cannot hold himself as MP, and thus cannot vote. What I mean, I'm waiting to see if that happens, will be the reaction of the NDC. Absolutely, yes. Would they decide to go on and vote, or would they then say, we are not going to take part in all of this? But, but, but they, they, I, I am absolutely certain they will not say, I'm going to go to take part, because if they don't take part, the MPP gets your way, clearly. Now, the only thing that you could use and say if they don't vote, because the, the, the standing of this says there must be a quorum mm -hmm. when Parliament sits for the first time to transact the business of electing a Speaker. The question is, without the NDC, will there be a quorum? Yes, because the quorum is just, um, it's, it's, it'll come down to about 90 members of Parliament. Yeah. Right? And, and the uh, MPP by themselves, their numbers, come from a quorum. So if they decide to say, they're yeah, boycotting, yeah, they're playing to the hands of the MPP. Well, but, but you so see, I, I doubt if that will happen. That's also part of the options available to you. And the reason why I, 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 I say this is that, look, Evans, there are times when you do things to actually draw attention to your dissatisfaction with a particular process. So could this be the way the NDC says we are unhappy and we believe that this is a calculated attempt by the executive to use the judiciary to influence the legislature? If they do that, look, if they do that, that becomes the talking point. Yes, they may have lost the speakership, but that becomes the talking point. And once it becomes the talking point, 
it serves the interest of whichever party does that because then you're drawing attention to what you want all of us to talk about. You want us to talk about the fact that you believe the executive is using the judiciary to influence the legislature, hence a decision to resort to the courts to have one person disqualified. I mean, no, not disqualified, injuncted. I do know also that, I mean, but for uh, the uh, elapsing of the uh, injunction on John Peter Mayu and the subsequent ruling by the Supreme Court, uh, you know, that could have also affected him. But that's what I want to see. I want to see the reaction of the NDC. Should the uh, clerk of parliament say, I have received the ruling of the Cape Coast High Court that injuncts the member of parliament uh, elect for us in North, uh, uh, Jonas Quayson? Well, listen, we are two minutes away now. Two minutes away. Countdown clock is on. Two minutes to midnight. At midnight, what will happen is the life of the seventh parliament, which, well, is still in existence, will be snuffed out, will, will, will expire. And immediately that happens, the clerk of parliament will sit in the chair of the speaker because there's no speaker. The eighth, the life of the eighth parliament would have been deemed to be in place. The, the decision, the first thing they'll have to do, because they can't do any other thing, is to elect the speaker. Now, pay attention to this. As of that moment, we only have members of parliament who have not been sworn in themselves. They are members of parliament elect. We are counting down to all this unfolding. Stay with us here on your lecture quarter because we're going to walk you through everything. Elton Brobe is with me. Um, Wingsing is with me. Now, the two names that have come up for election in the next few minutes, in the next few minutes, uh, Professor Michael Quay and also Arban Babing will be on the ballot. We expect this to happen. Now, Winston, let me bring you in here. There is a conversation that we need to have about these two gentlemen and their relationship with members of parliament over the last four years. And whether that will play into how many votes they get. We know the parties are whipping their members in line to vote on block. But as we know, this is going to be secret ballot, right? And mm -hmm. so this is going to be key. <laughs> you know, yes, exactly. It's, it's yeah, going to be key. You, you, you know, and and, and, and Kojo, Kojo was making the point about the relationship of Amababu with some of the members of parliament. But there's yeah. also a, a, a good point to make about the relationship of the, between Professor Magokwe and some of the MPP members. Exactly. And, and the independent candidates. Exactly. And let me mention names here because apart from the independent so, so candidates. So let me indicate it's 12 yes. now. It's okay. 12 midnight. So it's 12 midnight. So technically it's gone now. It's gone now. Uh, the, life of the, the life of the seventh parliament has expired. It's gone now. So we're waiting for uh, the eighth parliament to commence. But you know, the speaker Mike Okwe, former speaker Mike Okwe, was actually the one who read the dismissal of the Formina MP from Parliament. Now, you ask yourself that simple question, has he forgiven him? Well, he's indicated he's mm -hmm. forgiving his party. Uh, technically speaking, he doesn't have a party because he was sacked from the NPP and he cannot uh, pretend to be joining a party. That would mean he should be vacating his seat if he does so in Parliament. And there's also, uh, you know, um, the Minister for, uh, Minister of State in charge of public procurement, Sarah Joasafo. Evans, you remember the famous Canadian Japan statement mm -hmm. that the speaker contacted him to help his son unseat Adrasafu. Yeah. And it was the only reason why he, Canadian Japan, decided to support Adrasafu because earlier he had decided to stay away from Dom Kwavinya uh, parliamentary primaries. If you are a Sarah Adrasafu, would you want to vote for Professor Aaron Mike Okwe, who, if he becomes speaker, wields a lot of power, could eventually influence electorates in the Dom Kwabinya constituency where he served as member of parliament for two terms to vote against you should you decide to contest in the next uh, parliamentary primaries. Mm. Those are the dynamics here. I've just mentioned two names. Now, but, but you, the, the, so yes. Those are the two names. Mm. But then also on the, on the minority side, the speaker got into a lot of fight in the last four years. Yes. With, with members of the minority side. I, wanted to, I, want, I, want to, I want to dig into the archives a bit and bring you one of the moments when the speaker got into a heated fight um, with the minority side. And it, this got really, really, really heated. Uh, and and, and that, it tells you the sort of animosity that has existed between the speaker and the minority side. The, in this particular instance, how Andrew got up to be noticed? 
the speaker did not notice him having us stood for a while and then it degenerated into a heated exchange i wanted you to watch this unfold now uh in, in the last four years this this is this is the incident i'm talking about So when you move, when you when you ask after motion 30, when you move to motion 14, for, then I stood up. Mr. Speaker, the way before, it is for your interpretation, not change. Before a member moves a motion, not not change and the way before, it will interpret that I move. Before a, before the person moves the motion for third reason. So Mr. Speaker, it is because at that point, I don't know what present your mind about the minority that you really want to hear. That can only be the reason. Minority chief, are you opposed to... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, I have decided you couldn't catch my eyes. Minority leader. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll come back to this play out because this is going to be key. It tells you the sort of friction that has existed between the minority leader and Professor Michael Quay, right? Uh, and, and this might play out in the voting also. And Wing Singh had talked about the, also the, what might play out b because of the relationship Michael Quay had had, some of the tense relationship with some of the MPP MPs themselves. And whether that will play out in, for example, the outcome of the vote that we see. But the procession into the, into the eighth parliament, eighth parliament, we understand it's about to begin, um, and we are going to be giving you live feed of that right now very shortly uh, where we are expecting the clerk of parliament to enter into the chamber um, with the staff that represents parliament. Normally that staff would have been wielded by the speaker but the clerk remember is the one that will be acting uh, as the speaker until a, an election is done. We're going to be taking you live into that in, into the chamber and bring you and bring you a live feed of this because remember that we are almost five minutes into the life of the eighth parliament which must last for the next four years and this eighth parliament is about to begin a lot of action we have again this, this is a this is a big moment we have been anticipating looking forward to the eighth parliament since after december 7. exactly we are about to see it all unfold right now well, we're certainly about to see everything that we had all waited for right after election 2020. Yeah. I mean, so, so this is interesting. We are waiting to see this unfold. Elton Broby uh, will join us with that shortly. Um, we'll take you uh, into the chamber again shortly on, on this very important matter. But remember, our coverage is brought to you by Petrosol, clean fuel in full quantity. Uh, it, it, it's always a delightful experience. Cowbell coffee, taste it, love it. Magdan Shipping and Logistics Limited, your Total Logistics Partner, Pad Ever Limited, your home of morning furniture, DBS Roofing, we truly are your roof experts. Uh, Festival, Arling Flavors, your life. Uh, Watria Lotteries, um, um, also HEPA Plus Mixture for your general well-being. Elting tells me, we, are, we can go live now uh, and, uh, and take that uh, feed of the procession uh, into Parliament, which is, which is happening. Yes, Elting. Talk to me, Elting. Clark. Uh, come through the clerk's office, and uh, he's been led into the chamber by uh, personnel of the clerks at table. These are deputy clerks of parliament in various divisions of parliament. And they have their rope on. And they have their staff because the speaker is not in session. We will not have the parliamentary maze in place. It will only come in place when the speaker is duly elected and in the chair. So. What you are seeing right in front of us, you see all the parliamentary staff on their feet, meaning that there's a new dawn. History is about to unfold, and members of the eighth parliament are just in readiness to take their seat. The procession is just about to start, and this time around, it is the clerk of parliament who will preside over the meeting. 
uh, to usher in the eighth parliament of the Republic of Ghana. So, all right. So, 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 Evans. Oh, that's what all of us are seeing. What you see on your shorts is uh, members of the parliamentary marshals department. They act as security personnel here, and they are leading the procession into the chamber. So, what you are seeing on your screens now is the entrance to the office of the clerk, and that is where the procession is starting from. And the members will follow in order of seniority and in order of position here in Parliament. The last person will be the clerk, and one, once the clerk is in the chamber business will, will, will start. So, I mean, uh, this is what we're all waiting to see Evans Mensa. And it looks like we are, it looks like we are getting to the position where the clerks at table and the members of parliament, we, we are now repositioning ourselves because business is formally underway.